This is my third video on electrostatics. Now, we'll start this third video with electric flux. Electric flux is the total number of electric lines of force passing through a surface placed in the electric field this is the definition of electric flux means imagine if there is any surface which is placed in electric field suppose this is the surface which is placed in electric field and if these are the electric field lines which passes through this surface then electric flux is the total number of electric lines lines of force passing through a surface placed in the electric field so suppose this surface has got surface area a this is surface area it is placed in electric field this is electric field which is represented by vector e such that normal to the surface makes an angle theta with the direction of vector e it means theta is the angle between the normal to the surface to the electric field means if we place this surface like this then normal to this surface is this is the normal to the surface this is the surface normal to the surface means perpendicular to the surface and this perpendicular to the surface perpendicular to the surface has got the direction like this and the direction of electric field is like this means the angle between the normal to the electric field and normal to the surface and the electric field is zero degree here because they both are in the same direction but if we suppose this is the surface and number of field lines are passing like this and the normal to this and the normal to this surface just a minute and normal to this surface is this it means this is the normal green sketch pen is the normal to the surface and this my palm is the surface through which this electric field line electric field lines passes through this so the direction of the electric field line is like this and also normal to the surface is like this it means there is no angle between this normal to the surface and the electric field direction so they both are parallel to each other and when they both are parallel to each other it means the angle between them will be zero degree so if we tilt this surface like this suppose previously the surface was like this if we tilt this surface like this then what will happen the number of electric field lines passing through this surface will become less it is natural the number of magnetic the number of electric field lines pa will pass through this will will be decreased and the normal to this surface will be like this this is normal to the surface green sketch pen is used for normal to the surface and the flux line the electric field line will be like this it means there is some angle between this normal to the surface and this electric lines of force and this angle is theta the angle between black pen and green sketch pen is angle theta so this electric flux through the surface is represented by phi e it is equal to e a cos theta this is the basic formula for calculating the flux in dot product we can, in vector form we can represent like this vector e dot vector a phi e is equal to vector e dot vector a where vector a is area vector of surface this is the case one which i discussed with you and now suppose if this surface i am talking about this surface if the surface lies if surface 
लाइज पैरल टू फील्ड देन वॉट विल हैपन द थीटा विल बिकम नाइंटी डिग्री मीन्स इफ प्रीवियसली द सर्फिस वॉज लाइक दिस एंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन वी सपोज इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन एज ब्लैक पेन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन वॉज लाइक दिस एंड नॉर्मल टू द सर्फेस इज लाइक दिस एंड इन दिस कंडीशन देर इज नो देर देर इज जीरो डिग्री एंगल बिटवीन दिस नॉर्मल टू द सर्फेस एंड नॉर्मल टू द सर्फेस एंड द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड बट इफ इन सेकेंड केस इफ वी कीप द सर्फेस लाइक दिस मीन्स दिस इज पैरल टू द फील्ड दिस इज इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ब्लैक पेन इंडिकेट्स इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एंड दिस सर्फेस इज लाइज पैरल टू द फील्ड देन द नॉर्मल टू द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड विल बी लाइक दिस नॉर्मल टू द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड विल बी लाइक दिस then as you observe if i if i shift my hand like this then it will be easily observed by you that the angle between the normal to the electric field and the electric field line normal to the surface and the electric field line is 90 degree this angle will be 90 degree so due to this this theta will be 90 degree and in this case in this second case which i am writing as a note i will have zero flux why because if we put theta is equal to 90 degree in the basic formula it will be ea cos 90 degree the value of cos 90 is 0 so the flux will be phi e will be 0 this is 0 <coughs> have you understood this if in case of any problem you can see this video again or you can ask me directly now we will talk about gauss theorem gauss theorem the total electric flux over a closed surface over a closed surface in free space is 1 upon epsilon not times the net charge enclosed within the surface this definition derived from the formula of electric flux electric flux phi can be represented like this also this is closed integral of vector e not dot vector da it is equal to q upon epsilon not and this is 1 upon epsilon not times q we can show like this for the definition that the total elect this is electric flux phi the total electric flux that is phi over a closed surface over a closed surface means this closed integral indicates the closed surface over a closed surface in of in free space free space means vacuum is 1 upon epsilon not times the net charge net charge is q enclosed within the surface 1 upon epsilon not times the net charge enclosed within the surface means the net charge enclosed within the surface divided by epsilon not will be equal to dielectric flux here q is net charge enclosed within the closed surface okay now <coughs> we'll discuss four things and you must remember all these four things because it usually comes in board examination and this first is point charge these are actually the application of applications of gauss law applications of gauss law so first application of gauss law will be on point charge suppose this is a point charge 
which is represented by plus q it is kept at a point 2 and we have to imagine because it is a point charge so the gaussian surface gaussian surface will be like this this is gaussian surface gaussian surface for the point charge is in circle form circular form this is gaussian surface so suppose there is a point p on the gaussian surface and because if this is uh, plus q charge and if we want the electric field direction at point p and the electric field intensity at point p then it will be away from this this is e why this is away from this because it is assumed that if we keep a point charge q naught at point p this is plus q naught if we keep plus q naught point charge or test charge it is also called in some books it is called test charge also and if we keep this test charge at this point then it is natural that this plus q is positively charged and this test charge is also positively charged so this plus q charge will repel this plus q naught charge and that's why the direction of electric field intensity is assumed to be like this if we use test charge as minus q naught then the direction of electric field within the gaussian surface electric field intensity within the gaussian surface will be like this i am showing with the diagram suppose this is plus q this is the point where i kept this minus q naught charge this is test charge so the direction of electric field intensity will be towards plus q because they, this test charge will be attracted towards plus q charge so there is the there is a difference of only direction direction of electric field intensity <clears throat> now these are the two cases which you have to remember always now if we talk about the electric flux electric flux represented by phi e will be equal to q upon epsilon naught in this case for point charge you have to remember this this is point t now second point suppose the distance between o and p is smaller means we can say in other words we can say that a small r is the radius of the gaussian surface or radius of the uh, radius of that circle on the circumference of which the point p is taken into consideration so the electric field intensity or we can say simply electrical intensity electric intensity which is represented by capital e will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square i explained you what is r this r is the distance between o and p q we know that q is the charge which is kept at point 2 so the electric intensity will be capital e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square because we are considering this in free space that's why we are not taking into consideration the dielectric constant that is k because we know that for air or vacuum the value of k is 1 that's why we have taken directly epsilon naught we are not taking 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught k this you have to remember this all happens we, we, we are uh, we are exp uh, we are explaining this uh, application of gauss law by assuming that all the point charge infinite linear charge infinite plane sheet of charge and thin spherical shell these are the four applications of gauss law and we assume that these all the four application of gauss law is in the presence of vacuum only that's why we are calling it as free space and third one you have to remember what is the relation between the electric field intensity and small r it is very clear from the formula that it is inversely proportion to the square of small r means if anybody ask you to draw the diagram by taking a small r on x axis and electric intensity on y axis we can draw the diagram like this because this type of diagram between x and y axis between e and r shows that e and r are inversely proportional to each other 
so this is all about the application of gauss law based on the point charge you have to remember the things that the point charge has got the gaussian surface in the form of circle this is the gaussian surface the point charge has got the relation with r means electrical intensity will be represented by this formula this you have to remember and electric flux for the point charge will be according to the explanation of gauss theorem this 1 upon epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by the system this is that this plus q is the total charge enclosed by the system and this is 1 upon epsilon naught and this is according to the definition of gauss law now and third thing you have to remember this graphical relation between electric field intensity and small r now we will move to explain the infinite linear charge the gaussian surface due to infinite linear charge second application of gauss law is infinite linear charge linear charge means what suppose this is a line which is extended up to infinity and if we give certain charge positive charge to this line and suppose if we restrict the length of this line as a small l then this the gaussian surface will be the gaussian surface will be like this this will be the gaussian surface in the form of cylinder this is gaussian surface for linear charge and the length of this linear charge this uh, this line is small l it is we are not assuming up to infinity just to explain the concept we have to assume it as the length should be small l and the charge is given to this length only and considering considering this these two things the gaussian surface is developed in the form of cylinder and suppose the radius of cylinder is small r and if there is a point p where the electric field intensity flux the charge density is required to find out in this case then we have to think about this by by assuming that if plus q not charge that is test charge as i explained in the case of point charge this plus q not charge we have assumed that it was kept at point p in the same way we have to assume plus q charge kept at point p if we keep this plus q charge plus q not charge at point p and already at a distance r which is at the axis of the cylinder this plus charge is present here and if we keep plus q not charge at point p then it is natural that this charge will repel that charge and what will be the direction of that repulsive force it will be like this so it is very clear that the direction of electric field intensity will be represented by vector e which will be outside on the surface of the cylinder at point p because gaussian surface for infinite linear charge suppose charge density is represented by lambda and this lambda is represented by charge per unit length and if we cross multiply this then we get the total charge equal to total charge in this length will be q is equal to lambda l you have to remember this so this lambda is 
charge density this is a now b will be electric flux electric flux we all know that electric flux phi or we can represent it as phi e phi e is equal to q upon epsilon naught q upon epsilon naught but we know that q is equal to lambda l so in place of this q we can keep lambda l so this is lambda l upon epsilon naught so phi e is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught this expression you have to remember and third one is electric intensity electric intensity is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r you have to remember remember this also we'll do this the um, proof of this expression proof of electric field intensity for the infinite linear charge later on and fourth one you have to remember the relation between electric field and this radius of Gaussian surface and electric field intensity is represented by E. It is clear that E is inversely proportional to R. This is R. This is E. The graph will be same as it was explained during the explanation of point charge. The same graph. This is the graph of point charge. This is the graph of infinite linear charge. Graph between E and R. The difference is of only square. In case of point charge, it was R square. In case of this infinite linear charge, it is only R. But graphical representation is same. So, you have to remember this formula for this. Uh, infinite linear charge second the formula of electric flux phi e is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught third the formula of electric field intensity lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r and fourth one you have to remember this graphical representation of relation between electric field intensity and the radius of the Gaussian surface Now, the third application of Gauss law is, third application is infinite plane sheet of charge. Suppose this is infinite plane sheet of charge. And we have to assume particular area of this sheet and the Gaussian surface for this will be in cylindrical form like this on both the sides. On the back of this sheet, this cylinder will be like this. This is Gaussian surface, this and this, both are Gaussian surface and suppose plus charge is given to this infinite sheet. The distance, suppose we have to find out the uh, electric field intensity and flux at this point P and the distance of point P from the plane sheet is small r then the same thing as we assumed the presence of plus Q naught charge at point P this is plus charge if we keep plus Q naught charge at point P then what will happen the direction will be the direction of repulsive force the direction of electric field intensity will be towards the direction of repulsive force 
that hence the direction of electric field intensity will be away from this plate for this side and if we observe if we imagine this on the right hand side of the gaussian surface means this is full cylinder so and we assume that this cylinder passes through this sheet direction of electric field on the left hand side will be vector e like this now if we talk about if we talk about the charge density so for this charge density is represented by sigma <coughs> so sigma is equal to q upon a suppose the area is a area of this surface is a through which the gaussian surface is made and this is a this is a so sigma is equal to q upon a it means q is equal to sigma into a q will be the product of the total charge will be the product of charge density into total area so this will be the total charge and this is a part which you have to remember now b part is the electric flux electric flux phi e is equal to q upon epsilon not we know according to the gauss law and it is very clear that in place of this q we can write sigma a so what the expression new expression it will be sigma a epsilon not phi will be sigma a upon epsilon not and third third is electric intensity electric intensity is e e is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon not you have to remember this we will do proof of these applications later on after this explanation after this four applications explanation we will start the proving of all the four all the four uh, applications of gauss law and fourth one is the relation the relation will be between e and r it will be represented by a line parallel to x axis so in this explanation of application of gauss law based on the infinite plane sheet of charge you have to remember these four things first you have to remember this formula q is equal to sigma into e where sigma is the charge density and second you have to remember the electric flux phi e is equal to sigma a upon epsilon not third you have to remember the electric field intensity that is e is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon not and fourth one you have to remember this graphical representation of relation between electric field intensity and smaller now the last one fourth one is application of gauss law on thin is spherical shell or we can say that conducting sphere shell or sphere dono mein ye same thing hoti okay now suppose this is a sphere or shell which has got its center as o the radius is represented by capital r and if this shell is charged then due to the presence of positive charge on the shell or sphere the gaussian surface will be similar to the point charge 
रिमेंबर वॉट वॉज द गॉज इन सर्फेस फॉर पॉइंट चार्ज इट वॉज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ सर्कल सो दिस रिप्रेजेंट गॉसियन सर्फेस फॉर स्पिरिकल शेल और स्फियर इट इज सिमिलर टू द गॉसियन सर्फेस ऑफ अ पॉइंट चार्ज एंड सपोज इफ वी अज्यूम पॉइंट पी ऑन द गॉसियन सर्फेस then on assumption of distance of p from the center of the sphere is small r then the same imagination we have to do the direction of electric field intensity and this way this should be like this so the direction of electric field intensity will be like this which is away from this sphere because we have assumed the presence of test charge plus q not here and it will be repelled by this charge so the direction of electric field intensity will be away from this sphere or shell now a point which you have to remember that if charge density is represented by rho we are taking rho because it should be different from sigma if the charge density for this is rho then rho will be q upon 4 pi r square q upon 4 pi r square for infinite plane sheet we have taken a for linear charge we have taken l because it was linear we took we considered the area for this so that's why it was in the denominator it was taken as a capital a but in this case this is taken as q upon 4 pi r square where 4 pi r square is the so the surface area of this spherical shell or sphere is 4 pi r square because capital r is the radius of the sphere so that's why we have taken this in this way we can say that q is if we cross multiply this q will be equal to rho into 4 pi r square now second thing is electric flux electric flux is represented by phi e it is q upon epsilon not in place of q we can write rho 4 pi r square upon epsilon not so phi e for this thin spherical shell or sphere as rho 4 pi r square upon epsilon not you have to remember this you have to remember this e means the total charge and the third one is electric intensity electric intensity will be of will be taken as uh, at three places means the intensity outside the shell this is the shell the intensity outside the shell so in roman i am writing so for points outside e will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square outside on the gaussian surface the distance of p from o is taken as small r so that's why small r square is taken second for points on surface of shell this will be e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not on surface means we have to take in we have to take into consideration this radius uh, capital r so capital r will be taken in this formula of electric field intensity so 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon capital r square and if we observe this then 
this 1 upon 4 pi q upon r square if we only observe this then and if we take a look to this formula rho is equal to q upon 4 pi r square this is q upon 4 pi r square so in place of this in place of this we can write as rho so it will be rho upon epsilon naught is it clear this is the reason why we kept rho in place of this now the third means we are using roman now for points inside shell the electric field intensity will be zero always you have to remember this and now the d part for this application is the graphical representation this is on x axis we are taking we are taking r on y axis it is e and the graph will be like this like this this portion of the graph indicates the electric field intensity as zero as you observe that this y-axis this coordinate is zero so this represents e is equal to zero e is equal to zero in the inside shell and this graph represents this represents the relation as E is inversely proportional to R square. As we move away from the Gaussian surface, this is the position on the surface of the Gaussian surface. As we move away from the Gaussian surface, the graph will be like this. And this point indicates R is equal to capital R. Means this is maximum on the surface. This is maximum E on Gaussian surface. So this represents maximum electric field intensity on Gaussian surface. Inside the, Gauss inside the uh, sphere or shell, it is zero. And as we move away from the Gaussian surface, outside, then the graph will be like this. Okay. Have you all understood this? Thank you very much for watching.